Good morning. Those back rows, they get you in trouble all the time, don't they? I might have to send a teacher back there. Well, I got, you know, Roger and Rodney and Daryl and the whole crew back there. We're in trouble today. They're never going to be quiet. <laughs> Move them to the front. There you go. We'll do a new seating chart for next week. <laughs> no, I won't do that because then I won't know if they're in worship or not because they won't be in the right seat. See? So that's okay. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday. It is a joy to be gathered with you here today as we not only celebrate but commemorate 500 years since Luther nailed the 95 Theses or Statements of Debate to the Door. We've got lots of stuff continuing to happen here at Our Savior's Lutheran Church um, and you're invited to be a part of any or all of it as you see, as you are able. Now, you might have noticed on Facebook and the web that Gloria the Hot Dog's going to be here on Tuesday night. So for all of you who want to come trunk or treating or want to bring in a car to decorate and hand out candy, I would invite you to come and be a part of that and our Outreach Committee is going to be handing out hot dogs hot off the grill as um, the rest of us line up to welcome kids and adults alike as they come um, for trick-or-treating, trunk-or-treating on Tuesday night. So you are all welcome to be a part of that. And this afternoon at 4 o'clock is our Reformation celebration with the other ELCA churches of the Bear Butte Conference in West River at Calvary, and I would invite you to come and be a part of that as well. We have potluck afterwards, and there's always plenty of food, so I would invite all of you to stay and eat with us if you are able. Um, also, to the family of Janice Negabar, we want to extend our sympathies. Janice passed away a couple of days ago, and her funeral will be on Thursday in Hot Springs. With that being said, let's take a moment to breathe in and breathe out and welcome the Holy Spirit as we join together for worship. Please rise.
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Let us confess our sins to him and ask his mercy for the sake of Jesus. Almighty God, we have fallen short of your glory. We turn away from your will and follow our own sinful desires. We listen to the temptations of the world instead of listening to your word. Have mercy on us and forgive us. God has had mercy on us. He sent his son to be our savior. In his death and resurrection, we have forgiveness and life. You are justified, put right with God by his grace through faith in Jesus. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We are justified by God's grace as a gift. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, out of love for the world you created, out of grace, your undeserved favor for sinners, you sent your Son into the world. We, we give you praise, praise and thanks for the gift of salvation that is ours through faith in Jesus' holy name. Through his life, death, and resurrection, we have forgiveness and life. On this day, we give you thanks and praise for the life and work of your servant, Martin Luther, who led by your spirit through his study of your word, rediscovered the truth of the gospel, the good news that we are saved only by your grace through faith in Jesus. Help us to treasure that good news and to be bold in our witness as we share the gospel with others. Hear our prayers and accept our praise this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated, and I invite children to come forward at this time for the children's message, which is really going to be an all-people message. So if you want to just wait there, you can. And children, hear the deeds which God performed of old. Which in our young days 
today. Pretty good? You have good news to share, don't you? What good news do you have today? What do you have new at your house? Toys, maybe. Do you have something else new at your house? What? Monster trucks? How about I heard you have a new baby sister? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. It's a baby girl, and her name is? I know your grandma just told me, and it left my head already. Okay, grandma. Aurora. Aurora. I knew it was a princess's name. I just couldn't remember which one. Yeah, do you like her? Do you think things are going to change at your house now that you have a new baby sister? Probably a little bit, right? Jace, anything new and exciting at your house? Do you have a new baby sister at your house? No. <laughs> no new baby sisters at Jace's house. Just older sisters. Today we're celebrating 500 years of Reformation. That's a long time, isn't it? Do you think anything has changed in the church in 500 years? Do you think we're doing anything different than we did when Martin Luther was around 500 years ago? What do you think? How about you guys out there, you big kids? Anything changed in the church since you were these guys' age? Like what? Tell them about church when you were little. No women pastors. No women pastors. Yep. I wouldn't have been here. Now, some of you guys, I don't need any. Wish we could go back to that. Okay? Don't need any of that today. Technology. Technology. There would have been no screens when you were little, like these guys, when you were younger. Or what else? Heat in the church. Pardon? Heat in the church. Heat in the church. Did you know that some of those grandmas and grandpas came to church? There was no heat. Do you suppose they had to leave their coats on? What do you think? <laughs> Anything else that you guys can think of? Women hmm. dressed in dresses, Women hats, dr and gloves. Dresses, hats, and gloves. Yeah. And did you know there was a time when women sat on one side with the kids and men sat on the other side? You, we don't have to wear gloves yet, do we? Because there's no snow yet. That's right. That's right. And at one point in time, the service was only in Latin or German or Norwegian or Polish or Danish or wherever you were at. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have understood a word. Yep. The church has changed. Do you think you're going to see some changes as you grow older? I think so. I think so. Yep. I think there's going to be some changes. But you know what the most important thing is? We're still going to worship God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God's still going to love us and forgive us. And we're still going to believe that Jesus died for us. And that's what's important. That's what's important. So let's pray. God, I thank you for the changes as your people change, God, so that we can meet you in different ways. And God, I look to our young people, and I know that they will be the reformers of your church as well. So God, be with them and be with us and allow us older people to have open minds and open hearts so that we can reach out to engage others in your word and in your love, even if it looks different 
than what we grew up with. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I got the candy hiding back here. Jace, do you want to get the candy basket for me? Huh? All right. I will get it. I will get it. And we will sing our last verse as the kids head on back. To learn that in our God alone, their hope securely stands. That The scripture reading this morning is from Romans 3, verses 19 to 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although, <clears throat> although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes our boast of our boasting? It is excluded by what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. The word of the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. We sing together God's words, our great heritage. Our gospel text is from John, the eighth chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. 
The word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and from Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. Okay, we have a little confession time here. I won't make you come up front like in Luther's time to confess, but a little tiny show of hands would be okay. How many of you have ever gotten a speeding ticket? Yeah, maybe more than one. Yeah. Or maybe you were cited for failing to stop at a stop sign or parking somewhere you weren't supposed to park or... (laughs) There's a whole lot of giggling going on around here. I think we have more need for communion than I thought. (laughs) Now, did you try to justify your driving skills to get out of the ticket? Really, I was just going a few miles over. And my son's late for basketball practice, and I'm late for, for work, and I had a really important meeting this morning. Or, this is one of my favorites. I don't think you got my car. I think you got my radio antenna. It was going faster. And that stop sign, I really couldn't see it because, you know, the sun was in my eyes. Or I, I know that it says no parking, but I'm just going to run in for just a minute and get... You fill in the blank. Does it work? Can you justify yourself and your behavior? Can you put yourself in the right with your excuses and reasonable explanations? You know, we're really good at that. We've been attempting to do that for a really long time. In fact, it's in our DNA. Think back to the garden and when God approached Adam and Eve and said, have you eaten of the tree of which I have forbid you? Adam's first words are, she made me do it. (laughs) Yep. And Eve's next words are, The serpent made me do it, right? Trying to justify our actions. We've been trying to excuse ourselves for a really long time to get back into God's good graces or at least to put our own minds at ease. Our gossip? Well, it's just a little bit, and everybody knew that already. Everyone else is doing it, and I'm you know, really not sharing anything anybody doesn't already know. Jealousy or hatred toward an annoying coworker. Maybe I'm the only one that's ever experienced that in my life. Not now, though. Well, at least I'm only thinking those thoughts and I'm not acting upon them. I'd never really hurt anyone anyway. Greed, dishonesty in business dealings or taxes? Well, it's not like I'm robbing the bank or anything serious. The government gets enough money, right? And just in case, just in case, especially to cover all of our bases, usually especially when we're in trouble or illness, we may try to put ourselves right with God to make sure that we are in good relationship with him, to get on his good side, so to say. So we make these promises with God, right? I'll go, what if I go to church just a little bit more often? I'll try to go twice a month instead of once a month. Or maybe what if I put an extra couple of dollars in the offering plate? Or I'll make a better effort to go to the next Bible study, or maybe I'll make a better effort to volunteer the next time they need something It's not exactly making a deal with God, but maybe he'll be impressed just a little bit. Well, let me tell you, based on what I've read, God is not impressed. Nothing that we can say or do will restore our relationship that our sin and rebellion against God has destroyed. Scripture says whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point 
one point has become accountable for all of it. Still we try, but how much effort is good enough? Is 50% good? Will God meet us halfway? How about being good 85% of the time or 90% of the time? Or is even 99% of the time good enough? Well, according to Jesus, that is not enough. In Matthew, we hear his words, You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. We can't measure up ever. And in fact, Scripture says we are dead to sin. And Luther knew that. For those of you who have, might, were, have been able maybe to watch the Luther movie that was on PBS or that was in the theaters or maybe you have the old Luther movie, you will see that for Luther, being good enough for God was like his life's ambition. Because he was living in a time where you had to do things to earn God's love and God's forgiveness and God's grace and God's mercy. And Luther was plagued with the knowledge that he could never be good enough. And he strove every day of his life to try to be good enough. He would go to his confessor and he would confess for hours and hours and hours on end, making sure he did not miss one single little thing. And then when he was done and he went back to his room, he would turn and go back to his confessor because there was one thing he forgot. And he didn't want to take the chance that he had forgotten to repent of some sin so that he could not be forgiven. His confessor, it is said, would tell him at different times, Luther, go away and come back when you actually sin. What right, Luther would say, do I have? What right do I have to be the bearer of God's word, to administer the sacraments? Me, just a lowly, sinful person. And then he delved into scripture. And he discovered texts like we just heard in Romans. For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes the knowledge of sin. And you see, that's where Luther's teachings had stopped, or what he had been taught had stopped. But he kept reading, and he found these very important sentences. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. We are made right with God. We are justified, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And this is a gift. This is not something we can earn. This is not something we can achieve. This is not something we can buy. This is a gift of God. If I could do the purple exploding heads like the commercial, I would do that. Because for Luther, that's exactly what happened. His mind was blown away. He did not need to earn his righteousness with God. It was a gift. He realized that if we could earn our own way to God's righteousness to be made right with God, why did Jesus have to be sent to die for us? Because it is in faith through Jesus Christ that we receive this gift. And it changed the world. Luther only wanted to debate some of the teachings of the Catholic Church at the time. Luther wanted 
everyone to be able to go back into Scripture and say, why is it we believe this when this is what God's Word truly says? Luther never wanted to break away from the church, but yet this idea, this knowledge that transformed Luther transformed the world. And 500 years ago, he debated and he took a stand. Ah, here I stand on this word of God, and unless you can show me in Scripture, I will not be moved. And what started actually more than 500 years ago grew and grew and grew and grew. And here we are today, celebrating, commemorating, believing the very same words that Luther found in Scripture and believed. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and nothing can change that. Here we stand. But in my opinion, although it has been wonderful to, to think about the past, to learn again what it means to be part of the Lutheran church, to review what it was that brought about the reformation of the church in general, to hear about those important theological reflections that Luther came across in God's word, in baptism, in holy communion, in vocations, in two kingdoms, in being justified by grace as a gift, I don't think we get to stay there. We've spent a whole year focusing on the past as a church as a whole so we could celebrate on, on Tuesday not only Halloween but the 500th anniversary of the nailing of the thesis. And the past is great, and we learn from it. But do we get to stay there? Absolutely not. Because if we attempted to stay in the past, our ability to share God's love with others is going to run dry. Because we are not the same people that we were 500 years ago. It is not the same world. We are not in the same situations. And if we truly believe that God's word is a living word and that the gift of the Holy Spirit helps us to see it and read it, not only in the context of the past, but in the context of today, then that means the Holy Spirit is allowing us to hear God's word in yet a new way. And we struggle and we think about how do we uphold the traditions that we have, the, the doctrine that we have, the beliefs that we have, but still reach out and engage a world that looks so much different than it did even 20 years ago. I really appreciate the bulletin insert today. If you have a bulletin, I invite you to, to pull it out Take a look at the back. This has been in all year long with little bits and pieces. And today, today the important question is asked, does being a Lutheran matter? As we observe the 500th anniversary of the beginning of the Reformation, one of the questions many people have is, does being Lutheran matter today? And if it does, Why? Put another way, why are we still talking about Martin Luther, what he did, and why he did it? Does being a Lutheran matter today? I can't answer for you. I can only answer for me. And you probably are going to guess what my answer would be, so I won't even give it. But here's my questions for you as you ponder and consider why it is you show up in this Lutheran church, time after time after time. Think about what Lutheran's passions were and what his concepts were. What scripture says and why as he defined it for us. 
Think about what he stood on. Word alone, grace alone, Christ alone, faith alone. Are those still important rocks to stand on in today's world? I agree with you, Chick. Absolutely. I think even more so now, maybe, than in the past. In a world where media is trying to constantly tell us that we are not good enough, where there are other denominations that are growing and growing and growing because they will provide you a checklist of what you have to do and can do to earn God's grace and love, where individualism is becoming more and more and more important, where grace seems to be left out, I think what we have to offer in the Lutheran church is just as important now as it ever has been. And I will never be embarrassed to be a part of this denomination. And I will never claim that everything that the churchwide says is right and true. I will not follow blindly. I will follow my conscience. But my passion continues to be the foundation that Luther stood on. And I think we can be proud of that. And I am proud of you. And I am thankful for each and every one of you. Because I can look my colleagues in the face and I can say, I'm not a part of a rural church that is dying. I am part of a community of faith who is living and breathing the Holy Spirit, who not only honors the past, but looks to the future and is willing to engage in today's world in every way, shape, and form, who is willing to be open to the work of the Holy Spirit. And if that means some changes, like calling some crazy female pastor... Well, then this congregation, this community of faith is willing to do that. So thank you. Thank you for not only being a part of the past and the reformation that has happened, but thank you for being willing to be a part of the future and the reforming of the church that will continue to happen as long as our passion lies with the foundation of what Luther said. Word alone, grace alone, Christ alone, faith alone. Amen.
please rise. Journeying together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today, for the prayers of the people, I invite you to take the insert that is in your bulletin. And does anybody need a bulletin? Because I've got two, their boys, they're right beside you if you guys need one. Anybody else need another one? All right, if you would take that insert out, and we will read together the prayers. I will read the italicized, and you please read the bold print. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. We give thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit, whose light brought and continues to bring new understanding of both the living word and the written scripture. We are grateful for the inspiration that led to the printing press, enabling the spread of information and the sharing of the gospel in many languages. Generous God, we thank you for open hearts that were prepared to hear and receive the good news of freedom in Christ. We remember the lives that were lost in the struggle to reform the church on earth. Those who were martyred, those who died fighting, those who perished in hiding, and all who were killed on all sides. We lift to you those who are grieving including the friends and family of Janice, as well as those who are hurting, including Pastor Duane and Kayla, Hank and Bart, Bernie and Jay and Talon, Larry and Kelly, Elizabeth and Glennis, Heidi and Dennis, Leona and Dorothy and Beverly. We thank you for the instruction that comes through our church heritage the catechisms, the understanding of the saints, the gift of community, a deeper appreciation of God's gift of holy communion and a holy baptism, and a deeper awareness and acceptance of God's grace. God of stability and change. We thank you that true reformation is always your work and always being done in us out of your love for your whole creation. We are ever reformed by the work of your love. We are ever reformed by the work of God's love. Amen. You may be seated. As we gather together our offering, I want to thank you for your generosity For those who did not hear, your generosity helped feed 81 people on Wednesday night um, for our, during our dog night ministry, as well as many other ministries. So thank you. Today is our last day for our current mission of the month um, for our veterans and active duty military. So thank you for everybody who has donated to that as well.
please rise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as you forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This meal has truly been prepared by Jesus Christ, and all are welcome to come and receive the gift of forgiveness, grace, mercy, and love. We will do communion continuously, and I would invite the communion servers to come forward.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay. Now before we have the benediction, I was standing up here noticing how good looking this crowd was today in their variations of red, so I have to take your picture. Okay, are you all smiling? Because I'm sure we'll be able to see every one of you. Okay, one more. Yep, I see the lights. Oh, I need new batteries in my camera. Who would have guessed? All right, we got to get a picture of Marie over here. Is Connie hiding at the organ? Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, now we'll go over here and we'll get a picture of Connie hiding at the organ. Stay right there, I got you covered. Now y'all have to go on either the website or Facebook to check these out. Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together number 652, Built on a Rock, verses 1, 3, 4, and 5. Built on a rock, the church shall stand.
Before the dismissal, we're all going to go eat somewhere, so let's pray together. Sing with me if you know this. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. These mercies bless and grant that we may strengthen, may strengthen for your service be. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.